So um, smart anything, anywhere, everywhere. I'm not sure about the smart part, but I'm definitely sure that I'll be talking about almost anything, everywhere connected uh, vision. So I'm a kind of new kid on the block. So I just recently moved in uh, Cambridge University. I've established a new group, Internet of Everything. Um, so I'll be introducing my group as well. Um, is there any pointer here? OK, sorry. I wasn't meant to do that. See, I'm, I'm very bad at these type of stuff. OK. Um, no laser pointer, I guess. It's fine. Um, so this is kind of a very rough evolution of communication technologies. As you know, we've been using, uh, since uh, the uh, ancient history, we've been using some pictures on the uh, walls of the caves. We've been using small pigeons, visual uh, telegraph by Claude Chappé, French inventor, uh, electrical wires, and then uh, you know, tons of different versions of electrical communications, including radio waves, you know, 5G, et cetera. And I'll be talking about some uh, kind of science fiction, but not that much. Uh, it's happening right now. Molecular, Internet of Molecular Things, Bio Nano Things, Internet of Senses. So I'll be going through all different Internet of X people are talking about or working, spending money, spending their time, okay? So uh, I'm not any, anyway suggesting that we are working in all of these, but I just wanted to, you know, uh, go through and elaborate and show the possible research directions, like even people are working on Internet of Senses, a very interesting direction, in my opinion. Neutrino networks, this is an actually neutrino transceiver, well, not transceiver, but the receiver. It weighs 19,000 tons. Uh, it should be larger than, this is an actual picture of a, uh, of a research uh, 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 consortium in U.S. Uh, called Minerva Consortium. It should be this uh, uh, si building size. People are working on gravitational communication networks. There are patents on this. There are labs spending money for using gravitational wave, which has been just you know, physically proven a couple of years ago, as you know, in Stanford. And bottom line, Internet of Everything is kind of a, a vision that we have. So, um, so what do we mean by Internet of Everything? So, you know, mass is energy and energy is information. Everything is connected to each other. So we can really, if you, know the, uh, if you have the energy, you can convert it to mass or the other way around, theoretically speaking, of course. If you have the information, you can even, uh, with the Sillars engine uh, experiment, I cannot go into details because I don't have time for that, but we can talk about it later on. You can even uh, convert the information into energy. So everything is actually kind of connected. I'm not talking about some philosophical or abstract view here, but that's also uh, the case. Uh, but um, when we say internet of everything, we're not talking about just internet of things like this microphone, our watch, our wearable devices that connect to each other, but more actually like uh, some, some part of our tissues, certain cells, like several parts of uh, cardiomyocytes in our hearts, they're also connected. They might be connected, and you may want to connect them to the rest of the internet. How? Through different communication technologies, not necessarily electromagnetic waves or whatever. We need to think out of the box. So in that sense, uh, everything, Internet of Everything is actually around us. By the way, Internet of Everything is coined by Cisco, not in this direction, but it was kind of Internet of Things plus processes and algorithms and, and, and some you know, uh, 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 behaviors. So this is kind of a little bit further extending it. And actually, um, I mean, there are tons of examples of this, like Internet of Genes or Gene Regulatory Networks inside us make us you know, uh, healthy people or, or unhealthy people. Or the, the entire human body you can think of as the most complicated communication system. So if there is a communication failure in your nervous system, then you have MS or Alzheimer's even, tons of different illnesses. So communication is related to uh, certain processes inside um, human body as well. So in a very recent work, um, it, you know, some parts of the brain are uh, conventionally associated with uh, certain uh, behaviors, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, thinking analytically and uh, emotional thinking, listening, uh, uh, vision, etc. But what has been recently showed that, you know, the creativity is not associated to a certain part, but the connectivity among all these parts. 
Okay? So connectivity is very important in that sense. So people are uh, starting to think about all these uh, processes inside human body and outside in the entire universe from the communication perspective with just the idea of getting uh, further insights to, to help uh, solve some engineering problems. So in, in our vision, universe is, the ba is basically the internet of everything, connection of anything that you can think of, okay? So uh, it's already surrounding us, and our vision uh, in, in our research is to understand the rules and the dynamics from communication engineering perspective. I'm a communication engineer by education. So I've been working with physicists, I've been working with uh, life scientists in all different uh, directions, trying to understand different communication design principles, basically, uh, to come up with some uh, new technologies for artificial uh, networks of, let, let's say, nanomachines, or networks of certain cells inside body, or even uh, people are trying to do the same thing to realize new communication technologies between planets, for example, like nutritional, uh, or nutritional communication links. So, uh, but if we, if we look back a little bit to Internet of Everything, you know, uh, this is a kind of superposition of all the definitions that you can see in the literature. So in a framework in which all things have a representation in the internet, all things meaning physical and virtual. So physical things basically include, in our vision, everything up to the uh, molecular level. So these are some of the IOX. People are spending uh, time and money, as you all know very well, industrial internet of things, taking a lot of money. I even had some uh, market uh, analysis uh, with some uh, companies. Uh, that is the top ranking IOX, so to say, that you know, big companies are backing up. Uh, Internet of Bio and other things is just emerging. Uh, um, and we will go through some of these. They have uh, basically some common uh, 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 challenges, like enormous number of interconnected entities, uh, close interaction, blah, blah, you know all these, but basically enormous number of interconnected entities, but with interaction requirement between heterogeneous technologies, not only heterogeneous technologies, but totally different worlds, require looking at the problem domain um, out of box again. So these are a little bit detailed view of the key challenges. By the way, I'll be uh, going through some of these a little bit fast, and I have several references underneath. If you're interested, you can send me an email. I can share these slides with you. Okay, no problem with that. Uh, because uh, I'll be going a little bit fast. So like um, one problem or, or one uh, a salient feature of Internet of Things or in general Internet of Everything is um, uh, in addition to you know, classical challenges like connectivity, scarcity of bandwidth energy, efficiency, etc., is the application-driven networking. So you have a specific application in mind, so your solutions should be tailored to that specific application, okay? But at the same time, we're talking about Internet of X, so we need to be connecting that application to the Internet, requiring interoperability. So these things seem to be contradicting. So how are we going to solve all these? Unfortunately, I will not be talking about much uh, on the solutions part. I'll be introducing more problems, uh, including some of the preliminary work we have done and others done. Okay, So we will uh, start browsing from the molecules to the universe side. So the first thing that I can introduce you is, uh, uh, briefly introduce you, is the Internet of Molecular Things. So what do we mean by molecular things? You may remember, yes, last year, um, uh, one of the Nobel uh, 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 Prize awardees uh, was the inventor of the nanomachines, and he had the vision, I'm sorry, I don't remember the uh, name of the uh, um, fellow, but uh, the idea was that you know, we need to have these nanomachines, several of them, in place doing a job together. So how are you going to have something, several, in together and do job together? You need to communicate them. You need to enable communication among them. So how are you going to communicate nanomachines? You cannot attach the, you know, our classical wireless radio transceivers, etc. right? You need to do something else. So what we have done was, you know, we looked into the existing classical nanomachines in the nature inside us, and how are they communicating? Basically, they are communicating with molecular communication, so to say, okay? In terms of different attributes of molecules, like concentration or pro types or, or you know, uh, their uh, uh, polarization, charge, whatever, you know, tons of different properties, you can encode the information and send it, hopefully receive it, and decode it 
voila, you have the communication, right? Well, it's not that easy. One example of that was um, just one, uh, and this was practical, was based on first air resonance energy transfer, which is FRET, or further resonance energy, resonance energy transfer, which is, which is very well known uh, phenomenon in, in <coughs> bioengineering or physics. Uh, uh, it has been used in tons of different applications. Uh, the, the main idea is that you have a protein molecule here, another one here, donor acceptor, okay? They should be very close to each other. I'm talking about several tens of nanometers, okay? They, several ten, I mean, 10 nanometer, let's see, in the, in the scale of. Uh, it should be a fluorophore protein. What happens is that if you excite the donor, which is, let's say, transmitter with a laser from outside, this guy starts to oscillate and emits a photon. It's fine, you don't care about photons, right? Photons are everywhere. But what happens is then when the oscillation spectrum of this guy overlaps with the acceptor, then there's a non-radiative energy transfer. So if there's an energy transfer between any entity in the universe, then we can embed information on that, right? We can modulate it. It's easier to say than it's done, but we can do it. And actually, we have done that. In an experimental, you can, you can download the you know, audio files, etc. We have even passed the Bob Dylan's House of the Rising Sun before he, he was actually uh, uh, nominated for the Nobel Prize. So that was the first practical molecular communication, artificial basically, realized in the, in, the, in the lab. So what is the use of this? I don't know. I mean, I can imagine many uses, but I cannot do it because I need to excite these protein molecules. Uh, I mean, the idea was to embed it inside human body so that they could be you know, gateways or transducers to the outside, but I cannot excite the proteins inside the human body with the external laser source, source for the time being. But if I can extract or scavenge or, or harvest sufficient amount of energy inside the body, then this might be a possibility later on for a little bit you know, farther uh, idea of, of, of internet of everything, let's say. So there are tons of uh, opportunities for, for uh, collaborations. So I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about these at the end if I have time. So in all these directions that we have worked so far. So Internet of Nanobio things is another direction. So that was just for the molecular uh, uh, communication perspective. By the way, by the way uh, Internet of Nano Things has been listed as the top, one of the top 10 emerging technologies in 2016 by World Economic Forum. So this is really happening right now. And COMSOC, IEEE COMSOC, has also listed this, uh, both IoT, IOE, and molecular communications as the communi one of the you know, emerging trends in 2017. So these are really taking up right now as a very young and interdisciplinary research directions. So what do we do here is basically um, in one of the grants that I had from ERC is that we wanted to understand the nervous system from communication perspective with two objectives in mind. One is to uh, extract some design principles to really, uh, again, realize artificial communication between that small, tiny stuff. Because we know that nervous system is an excellent communication uh, uh, system, you know, thanks to a million years of evolution. Uh, but it's not that easy to understand what's happening there. Of course, we're working with life scientists. So that was the first uh, uh, objective. But the second and more exciting uh, objective of this project, which is still going on, is that you know, if we can really understand what's happening there from communication perspective, maybe we can really relate some of the diseases to communication failures. Well, some of them are quite obvious, like spinal cord injury, for example. Right? It's, it's a very mechanical communication failure. Or even multiple sclerosis. It is basically, there are tons of types, but the loss of the myelin sheet, which is kind of the interference over the coaxial cable where you lose the you know, uh, insulator around it, or similar to the uh, uh, interference between two base stations. We, we know how to solve interference. You know, channel equalization techniques and all. Can we use our engineering, not us only, but human beings, engineering technologies to help life scientists to solve uh, uh, some uh, life science problems. So, so these are the uh, 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 directions that we are following in the internet of everything. So some other people are also working uh, um, in this field. Uh, like the leftmost one is the new bio cyber interface we have designed, but we will be uh, implementing here in Cambridge. But the, the middle one is from Berkeley, from Alex Zettel lab. It's an actual picture, not a drawing, of a radio. That's an AM radio receiver. Transmitter is very difficult. Um, 
so what they can do is that they can receive an AM amplitude modulated radio wave basically and demodulate it and listen to it with this very tiny radio. So they're, they have been working on uh, try, you know, trying to realize the transmitter counterpart of this. It, it, it is difficult because of the physics. Uh, but if, it, if they can do it as a system standalone device, then it is, in my opinion, one of the, the transceivers that we can use to realize Internet of Things because you can actually attach it everywhere you like. But there are tons of challenges ahead. Other people are working on graphene-based terahertz uh, uh, transceivers uh, inside laboratories. So addressing all these different challenges. So I'll, I'll, I'll a little bit uh, speed up here. So uh, again, some, uh, one of the directions uh, uh, for uh, communicating the spine with the graphene-based neural interfaces to the rest of the internet or to the, to the problem, uh, uh, problematic part of the, or the rest of the spine, spinal uh, cord, let's say. Another uh, very interesting direction is to do the molecular communication using different types of materials inside a room. Instead of using acoustic or electromagnetic wave, can we use simple, simply a certain set of molecules to communicate between myself and my fellow over there, which cannot be detected by any of the classical um, detection methods. You can imagine there are tons of applications. OK, so I'm wrapping up. Uh, so the rest are basically uh, tons of different directions, which I do not work on directly, but I'm aware of that. There are many uh, references, again, as I told you before. If you're interested, I can share these slides, which you no problem with that. And you can, you can further elaborate. So Internet of Senses is a fantastic direction that people are trying to pass a sense, all senses, basically, of a human being to some other place in other time on the surface of the Earth. So this is not just you know, communicating or, or replicating the view of the camera here. It's just trying to send the senses of the, of the cortex to some other place. It's, it's, a very interesting direction. There are, some, uh, there are some projects going on in in the U.S. as well. Internet of sensors, classical direction, uh, but with energy harvesting stuff, it's it's again uh, very important. Uh, we had very nice talks in the morning session. I think there is a nice opportunity to to uh, go for it. Very large scale, uh, battery free, totally battery free and passive sensor networks again. So. Uh, 5G, let me go. Internet of Energy, again, another direction uh, coined by some other people. Uh, pass the energy and communicate and carry the energy together. Um, so I promised my session chair, and I'm trying to keep my promise. I'll, I'll finish in, a, in the next minute. Is that OK? Great. OK. Internet of Vehicles sounds. Uh, uh, you know, quite obvious, but Internet of Battlefield things, it's very interesting direction. I know uh, uh, DARPA uh, uh, reserved several hundred of million dollars for only Internet of Battlefield things, not on Internet of Things. So uh, you can guess the meaning of Internet of Battlefield things, but it's a very emerging uh, field. I I've been an e evaluator in one of the panels there. so. There are tons of projects uh, being proposed, and researchers are working on this. Um, this is more classical. Non-classical one, Internet of Money. Uh, Bitcoin has just dropped two days ago, but still people are working on Internet of Money. Very interesting direction. I have no idea about money and all, but if you're interested, you can, you can further elaborate. And Internet of Space, you know, including even Google are you know, spending a lot of money on, on space exploration, and they're trying to now send thousands of devices around the, around the planets, not only Earth, but around Mars and several others. So how are we going to communicate all these? The, the classical internet-based communication techniques will not work with that high latency uh, channels and very, very uh, problematic channels. So all these, needs, all these challenges need to be uh, 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 addressed. So, this is the open issues, but basically I have already talked about all the open issues so far. I haven't even mentioned any, any solution. I'm aware of that. So if you're interested, you can go over all these. And uh, so let me, let me uh, stop and thank you, everyone. Uh, so this is my current team here. We are extending, we are expanding, and, and there are tons of, uh, not tons of, I should revise, there are some postdoc and PhD positions as well. And we, are very, uh, we would be very happy to collaborate with any of you guys here, including ARM as well. Thank you very much.